Shalom, Kahala Yahawa, Bashem Yahushai, Bashem Rukal Kordash. Double honors my teachers, the apostles and elders of the Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the elect for the house of David, reborn again in this generation. And Shalom to the 130 Yasharala. For today, we're known as the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Who before losing our true heritage, we were known as and still are the true Hebrew Israelites of the Holy Bible. In today's lesson, we're going to touch upon the subject of being saved. And the reason why I'm going into this today is because last Saturday at camp, we had a Christian come up and ask some questions. Right? One of those questions being, do we believe once saved, always saved? Right? And we told him that and there are a couple ways to answer that, right? But first, we wanted to uh, to uh, address the fact that the Christian understanding of that is off, right? That he doesn't understand what it actually means to be saved, just like the majority of the world, right? The majority of the world believes that once you started going to church and start worshiping some, you know, blue-haired or, you know, blue-eyed, blonde-haired, you know, skinny white guy named Jesus, that you're good, right? And that you think that his blood is, you believe in his blood has saved you and all this stuff, then you're, you're good, right? You got you just got to drink his his blood and eat his flesh every, every Sunday and, you know, say a couple Hail Marys and confess all your, you know, per pervert, um, you know, sins to some pervert in a closet and and uh, you got nothing to worry about that you're saved well that's wrong okay that that right there is the doctrine of men right none of that is is in the Bible okay not not in that context at least right you see now to address how else we could have answered that right once saved always saved well that's true right that's true but only for the elect, the 144,000 and the one-third, which is one out of every three Negro, Latino, Native Americans that are going to be the elect, right? The, 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 the Israelites who are going to be saved out of this, right? Now, here's the thing, right? We don't know who the elect is, right? Lord willing, I'm part of the elect, but I don't know. That's why I'm doing this work, and that's why if you're out there watching these lessons, you know, listening to this truth, reading the Bible, wanting to be saved, you also have to strive for that for that mark. You gotta run that race, as, as it says in the Bible, right? Because you don't know if you're gonna be part of the elect or not. You gotta, you know, you gotta, you know, to be, you know, be diligent and make your calling assured, right? Now, back to the to address the question, right? Christians and all the world have this belief of being saved and once you come into religion that you're good that you don't you know you could be you could be a pervert you could go molest little kids you could eat pork sandwiches and you could do all this stuff as long as you believe in the blood of Jesus you could be saved but that's false okay now the term being saved that gets messed up when you ask a Christian or any religious person that thinks they're saved, you ask them, well, what are you being saved from? Right? They're going to give you this deer in the headlights look and then talk about how they're covered by the, the blood of Christ. And, you know, that's, and they'll, you know, spout off some other hyperbole that they've heard from their pastor and feel good rhetoric that doesn't go anywhere, right? And then, but, but that shit doesn't work on us, right? I just as it shouldn't work on you. Right, all that you know, nice words and everything. It no longer has the pull that it used to, man. Right, and these and these religious people are now starting to find that out. Right, when they come up against the Hebrew Israelites, right, they come up against us. You know, what are they saying that they have they, that they have to prepare before they encounter us? They have to train and get into the scriptures. Now that's a disgrace, man. That 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 uh that they've been in the church this whole time and they don't know 
what the hell's going on? Well, this is all part of prophecy, man. The Lord is doing this to them, right? Because they've all been worshiping in vain, right? Because to be saved, you have to understand one, one, you have to understand what it actually means. And second, you have to be part of those people who have been cast down so that way you can then be saved, right? You can't be living in your lofty heights, you know, gated community, you know, not having a care in the world and being part of the dominant race in this society, that being the Edomites, who are, you know, what you would call today so-called Caucasians, right? They rule this world, right? So what the hell do they have to be saved from, man? Right? Well, let's go ahead and read what it, it is that we need to be saved from. Now, this right here goes to the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, and anybody whose father's lineage goes back to that bloodline, right? The Israelites, okay? And the reason why I continue to say those, those, those three particular races um, is because you got to understand the prophecy that tells you about how our enemies will come together to make Israel no longer a name that actually came true, right? When you say Israel, you no longer believe or you no, you no longer think of the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans as a whole. You think of those, those rats over in the land of Israel today, okay? Because they have succeeded in erasing our name. But again, this was all part of prophecy, Jeremiah 17 and 4, how the Lord would cause us to discontinue from our heritage, right? And he did this by what we're about to read right now, right? Let's, let's read this. This is Baruch 2 and 1. I'm going to read this whole thing here. Therefore, Yahweh Bashim Hashai hath made good his word, which he pronounced against us, us being the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, and against our judges that judged Israel, and against our kings, and against our princes, and against the men of Israel and Judah, right? And right here it's talking about Israel, the northern kingdom, the Latinos and the Native Americans, and Judah, the southern kingdom, the so-called Negroes. Verse 2, to bring upon us great plagues such as never happened under the whole heaven as it came to pass in Jerusalem according to the things that were written in the law of Moses, right? The, the Torah, right? When we had come out of Exodus and Moses had, had given us, the, what is it, Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 15, he said the blessings we would get. And then from 16 all the way up to the end, all the curses that would befall us if we didn't follow the Lord, well, we broke that law. We broke that deal. And this is the punishment we're paying for, as we're going to read. Verse 3. The man should eat the flesh of his own son and the flesh of his own daughter. Right? Now, that is not only physical, right? Well, you know, we had to resort to cannibalism in some situations, but it also just talks about you know spiritually man look at look at today's you know family structure man the father basically the family structure devours itself man right the the parents don't don't produce anything to make life easier for the children for the most part man we consume what should be theirs right their inheritance goodbye we need to pay the bills right their house Sorry, it's been sold because we can't afford it. You know, things like that. Verse 4. Moreover, he hath delivered them to be sub, sub to be in subject subjection to all the kingdoms that are round about us. Right? And who is around about the Israelites during that time? Well, you had the other 17 nations, especially the nation of Edom. Right, the so-called Caucasian race, because you gotta, when you read the Bible, you're gonna understand that the Israelites, the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, we've been under captivity under every other nation in this world, okay? We were, we were slaves to the Japanese, the Chinese, the Arabs, the, you know, the Africans, the, the, uh, the Ar Aram, all these other nations, all these other, 17 heathen nations that were around us at the time we were in Israel we were at one point or another in their captivity 
And the Lord did that because he had to put us through a punishment and through it and ultimately he also needed to test out these these other nations, man, to see how they would treat us. Some nations treated us good, like the Persians, right? The modern day nation of Iran. Some other nations, they treated us very treacherously. Like in our current captivity, the so-called Caucasians, the Edomites, right? They they've gone way too crazy in their in their punishment of us. So much so that the Lord's gonna ultimately destroy them for what they've done. Right? Let's continue. To be a reproach and a and desolation amongst all the people around about, where the Lord hath scattered them, right? Showing that the Lord was gonna scatter us out of the land of Israel to amongst all our enemies. Verse 5. Thus we were cast down and not exalted because we have sinned against Yahweh Bashim Ashai our power and have not been obedient unto his voice. To Yahweh Bashim Ashai our power appertaineth righteousness but unto us and our fathers open shame and appeareth as appeareth this day. For all these plagues are come upon us, which Yahweh Bashim Ashai hath pronounced against us. Okay? And that's ultimately the truth about it, man. That's the truth that that of what's going on with the Negro, Latino, and Native Americans' current plight. When you look at what's going on, yeah, man, there may be some of our people who are making it rich. Making it rich, they're. You know, they're good, they have no care in the world, but more than often, a lot of those people are gonna be tares, meaning that their father is not a Negro, Latino, Native American, or anybody whose lineage goes back to that bloodline, but in fact, that their father is, uh, is one of the heathen nations. I'll give you an example. If you look at, uh, in Mexico, the richest Mexican is this fat fuck called Carlos Slim, right? He's some big, telecommunications billion you know trillionaire I guess or probably billionaire I don't know some you know so he looks Mexican right you look at him man you're thinking fucking hey that's Jose right there but no man when you go into his lineage his father's an Arab his mom's an Issacharite right but here he is uh, living in Mexico off the fatness of the world or fatness of the of the earth you know and carrying himself as he's a he's a Issacharite man but he's not. He's a he's a he's a tear, and li you know living off of the backs of our people, right? You also got other other uh, tears, man, from other nations, man. Or if they're not tears, they're gonna be sellouts, right? Meaning that they took a bribe to push wickedness upon our people to be those Judas goats that are gonna lead our people to the slaughter by uh, by making them worship wickedness by pushing these these uh you know wicked ways of living upon our people right uh, a perfect example of this is look at little uzi vert look at travis scott look at all these damn rappers and singers of all our nations man you know all these people have been bought up and and given in to greed and they're living you know deliciously right now but that's okay because ultimately that's their consolation, right? They're not going to make it into the kingdom of heaven without having to die and give up their souls, okay? That's that's their uh, forfeit, that they are, because they were traitors to our people, that they're gonna have to die a painful death and then be reborn into the kingdom and then, you know, be ashamed for a bit, you know, while they realize what they had done because everybody's gonna know who who, you know what they did and who they are right and and uh, that's how people like it tells you in the scripture that says some shall awake to everlasting shame and others to everlasting glory okay and if you're you know in this truth you're learning this lesson then count yourself blessed because the Lord has chosen you to wake up and he did not tempt you with all these other things that these celebrities are have been tempted with and have failed okay now just to show you that even till this day, here in America and around the world, in modern day, you know, December 2021, we are still in captivity. 
let's read this. This is Jeremiah 8 and 20. The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. Right? And this is uh, spiritual, man. Right? This, this scripture here falls upon us today. Because when you get into the, the, the details, the minutiae of your current liberties that you enjoy in America, around the world, whatever country that you're in, if you are a Negro, Latino, Native American, or your father's lineage goes back to that bloodline, you understand that your livelihood and freedom, so-called freedom, I should say, is based upon some sort of farce, some sort of contract with the government, right? And that ultimately, you are, in one way or another, uh, a, a tax slave, okay? You are uh, you are the uh, part of the what they were referred to as the proletariat, right? You are the... Uh, you're, you're the bums of the society, man, right? And again, this doesn't mean that you're not going to have a good job. It doesn't mean that that you're not going to be able to come up every once in a while. Yeah, man. You know, we're resourceful people, man. We are. We always strive and excel in the things that we put our minds to, man. This is why when you look, you know, throughout history, our people have always dominated everything that they've taken upon themselves, man. Look at today, right? Our, our people are, are dominating the sports world, the entertainment world, the, the music world, right? And if we were allowed to, we dominate the financial world, the, the you know world markets, all these things, man. Look at the tech, tech world, man. A lot of our people are in the h higher echelons. But through, through a, you know, organization, and nepotism and all these things, Esau only lets us climb so far in certain in certain venues, man. Look at what happened to Bill Cosby, man. He was trying to buy, I think, NBC, and they put his they 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 uh, threw all that bullshit, uh, you know, uh, claims at his ass, man. Caught, pulled his ticket and told him, no, nigga, you're flying too high. And they fucking pulled and, and they threw his ass in the slammer. For a while to let him chill off to let him understand that he's just one of us right though he may have all these millions and he have all this respect that 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 the god of this world these edomites that they can bring them down right and that's the way it is for for all our people man you know and i speak of experience right i i climbed very high within the tech industry man so much so that i I was faced with the temptation of Satan, right? But I didn't give in. I decided to not no longer be involved in certain things, right? And I took a more, you know, chill uh, approach to my to my career. And then the Lord came in and saved me, you know, from from my current situation and put me on the right path to salvation. That be that that is right. Now, next, I want to read the type of captivity that we're in. Right? Because like, like I just kind of highlighted, man, we are in this day in our captivity, right? And we are not saved, right? Even if you're in this truth, you are not saved. You have to fight for that space on, 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 on the chariots, man. And how do you do that? By staying diligent to this word, by continuing to read the Bible, continuing to learn the lessons of the Lord, by having them constantly in your thoughts, so that way when the wills of the devil come at you, they throw these mandates at you, they throw these temptations to you, you, you know that that is of the devil. And you either avoid it or you turn it away. Right? And eventually what's going to happen is there's going to come a physical temptation. That being the MOTB. Right? Revelations 13, 16. And it's going to be up to you with everything you've learned, with all the faith that the Lord has given you, that you've managed to to gather up, to to confide in, and to believe in, for you to stand up in that horrible day, right? That day that you have to walk away from that thing you really wanted, that thing that you worked so hard to, to get, right? If the Lord if the Lord wills it, He's gonna test you, man. But again, pray that the Lord doesn't put you through a test that you cannot cannot uh, handle and it tells you in the scriptures that he won't right so, that, so ultimately man you just have to 
have to stay faithful, man. Because again, the Lord, He is testing us just as before, man. You know what it is? It's like if you had a girlfriend, right? You had a partner and they cheated on you, right? And, and but you, you know, you reconciled and you're talking again, but now you're still checking their phone. You're checking, you're checking them out every once in a while just to make sure that they're not fucking around, right? That's what the Lord is ultimately doing, man. He wants to make sure that we're not gonna fold again and, and go after the way of the devil, right? This is why us that are in this truth, we understand what's going on, man. We're, this is why we're being so diligent, right? We understand what happened to our people that caused us to be in this, in this captivity, man. And we, we don't want any part of it, man. We want to go back to the blessings and, and to the worshiping of our power. Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, right? Yahweh being the true Hebrew name of the Father, which is Hebrew for He is. And Yahweh Shai, the only begotten Son, and that being Hebrew for He is salvation, right? That's the true name of the one who everybody ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, right? That's another thing, man. To be saved or to have a chance of being saved, you have to understand what the true names of the Lord and His Son are, okay? You have to, and that's all part of being diligent, as far, uh, you know, part of, you know, loving the Lord enough to honor His name, to, to research it out, right? The people out there who are still calling upon Jesus and are adamant that they love the Lord, right? Do they really love the Lord? But, you know, they, they haven't given them enough time to, to go through the Bible to, or to, you know, look for information as far as what his name truly is. I see, that's that's all vain love, right? It's, it's, it's a fruitless endeavor on their part. But again, let's, I'm digressing. Let's get into the description of the captivity that we are currently in. This is Wisdom of Solomon 15 and 12. But they counted our life a pastime, and our time here a market for gain. For say they, we must be getting every way though it be by evil means, right? And that's, that's us, man. You see, this is what our captors, you know, this is what their mindset is, man. Look at, at, at our life, man. We have to pay for everything, right? And when, we, and, we, and when we're done paying for everything, we get fined, we get tickets, we have, uh, you know, bills past due that we have to pay, right? A new surprise, you know, handling fee or this and that. Right? Because we are subject onto payments till this day. Because again, this is all part of our captivity. And this is the way that these other nations are, are making a living off of us, man. See, they're the parasites who are who are living lavishly off of our backs, man. That's part of our captivity. Is that these other nations would basically have us in a form of, of servitude, man. And though again we have our own houses. We have our own places, our own cars. You know, we, we make our own food. It, the, the type of servitude is high end. Where you can't even see the chains which surround your lives, man. Right? Who do you have to pay for your food? Who do you have to pay for rent? Who do you have to go serve eight hours of the best time of the day? Five days a week, if you're lucky, to, uh, to, to be able to pay for all this shit, man. And when you do get paid, who do you have to, you know, who, you know, who removes money from your check to, to pay for what they call as taxes, right? It's these devils, the, the people that we are under captivity till this day, right? We're being taken advantage of in every way, man, right? One way to, that, that was a real eye opener for this, man, you know, I have a house, right? And, um, and it took me by surprise when, when I had to realize, man, that not only am I paying for the water that I use at my house, but I'm having to pay to get rid of that water, right? And, 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 and you know, sewage fees and, 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 and all that stuff, man. So you pay for what c comes in and what goes out. These devils got you every way, man. See, this isn't living, man. This is just existing. And we've managed, we've been in this captivity so long, we think this is normal. But it's not, people. This is not the way that life should be. This is not the way that our lives should be as Israelites, man. So, how do we get saved? How do we get out of this? This is the Messiah himself 
Explain it to us. This is Matthew 14 and 13. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Okay? That's the truth of it, man. That you, just like that Christian we told on Saturday, have to go through the tribulation, right? And there's no pre-trib, post-trib, tribulation periods. No, man, there's only one great tribulation, right? Jacob's trouble that we all have to go through. Everybody on earth will have to go through it, right? Even these elites, they're going to go through it, but they're going to go through it on their side, right? They're going to be the, the, the ones pulling the, the, the levers to make this shit happen on earth. Now, ultimately, the Lord is pulling their levers to bring it upon the earth, but they're the ones who are going to, you know, be in fear that they're going to get caught. They're going to be the ones who are going to gonna be worrying that it's going <clears> to, <throat> that, that they're not going to have enough time to finish it, which, you know, I'm going to give you a spoiler alerts. They're not. They're not going to be able to accomplish their, their, their grand scheme. Like it tells you in Job, man, that the Lord is going to strike them through when they are about to fill their belly. And for the rest of us, man, we're going to have to go through that, which means, one, you're going to have to be aware of these devils, man. You're going to have to make certain sacrifices in your life. You're going to have to travel a long distance to get to work. You're going to have to, you're going to have to give up certain things. You're going to have to, you know, stand up to the powers that be when they bring forth all these you know, new regulations and, and, you know, all these things, you know what I'm talking about. And ultimately, you got to turn down that favor that they're going to want to give you, that they're going to want to put inside of you. You got to turn that shit down, right? Because they're going to make it seem like it's the best thing on earth, man. They're going to throw in so many bonuses, benefits. They're going to give you free donuts, burgers, fries, fucking bring out your favorite celebrities to get one, two, three, four, five of those things put inside of them, man. You're going to see, you know, your best friends, your family members, your favorite uncle, your favorite uh, cousin. They're all going to come and show you the great new thing that they got and how you should get it too, right? But again, it's going to be up to you to endure until the end if you want that salvation. So that's what it means to be saved, off you, is that... We are saved out of our current captivity, which we are in today, and from which we are not currently saved. All right. So, hopefully, this video was edifying. Until the next time, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Rupert Pradash. Double honors my teachers, the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the elect. Shalom.